I'm Brady from Slain and Spines, and I'm joined today by my partner in love and life, Bryant, and today we're going to be talking about our favorite comics. So, Bryant is an avid comic book reader, and I also enjoy comics from time to time, so I thought it'd be a fun video to sit down with him and discuss some of our favorite comic books. Yeah. Starting off with Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. In this book, Scott McCloud addresses comics as a medium and art form. It's mm -hmm. loaded with just great advice for writers and artists, um, and it really breaks down what comics are uh, beyond, you know, superhero panels. He goes through the secrets between the panels, um, just the power of just color and lines, time, storytelling, all sorts of things. Yeah, I had to read Understanding Comics in one of my college classes, and I loved it. It was very enlightening, and I feel like it inspired me creativi cre inspired creatively. me creatively as well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like just like things you never thought about about comics. So one of my favorite comics is Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. Uh, I had to read this in college as well. I had a really amazing women's lit class in which we studied only comic books and graphic novels. So I read this for that class and I really enjoyed this for a few reasons. I love the art style of this graphic novel. Um, I love that it's heavily contrasted between black and white, and it really inspired me drawing my own comics as well. Lots of like heavy, just like black and white contrasting each other. Sort of like in this picture how, you know, it's a lot of black because they're all wearing the black veil, um, yet around the outline there's a little bit of white to kind of separate it all. Otherwise it'd be just like one black mass um, of faces. So I... I really like the art style of this one, um, and I also related a lot to Persepolis just like as a teenage girl, um, and I love female protagonists. So. The story is just really good. The story is really good. I learned a lot from reading this. Um, I think there's one, two of them, right? Yeah. yeah I actually there's... read Persepolis in my French class in high school. Ooh. So we read it in French and then watched the movie. French. The not, movie is really good. I've not seen the movie. It's, oh. it's good. <laughs> now, now a major, major motion picture right there. <laughs> and then I had to read it for my required reading for freshman year as well. It goes through it, like three wars. Yeah, it's during... The course of three wars. War. Or two. Life during war. I'm gonna reread this one. See, this works way better than the stack of books I had in the other video <laughs> that I was trying to fan myself with. Next up for me, I have... Morning Glories by Nick Spencer. Morning, Glory. Morning Glories uh, is this crazy psychological thriller about this prep school that these kids that get accepted to this prep school and just all sorts of crazy things happen. It's very graphic and violent and it's definitely a horror comic. It looks innocent. I know it looks innocent. I know. It just looks like a bunch of teenagers going to high school. But I have volumes 1 and 10. I've read all volumes, but uh, I only have the two. Because you read it online. Yes. I don't, I don't really want to show any pages. <laughs> this one looks innocent enough. Yeah, I don't want to show an innocent page because I feel like it doesn't do it justice. <laughs> but like at the same time, I don't want to show one of the graphic pages because this is your video. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I'll, I'll just recommend it and say that Morning Glories Academy by Nick Spencer. Um, one of my favorite comics. <laughs> A real page turner. Uh, but graphic. And, but very graphic. <laughs> the next comic I have selected to share on this video is the Batwoman New 52 series by J.H. Williams III and W. Hayden Blackman. Um, this one also has Amy Reader and Trevor McCarthy on it, but this one is the one that I have the most uh, pages to share about because I think this is one of the most beautifully done comic books in the Batwoman series. It's like I love a good heroine. That woman's a redhead. Uh, in this series, she is a lesbian, and actually, unfortunately, part of the reason why this series is so short is because maybe it was DC, but there was a disagreement about whether Batwoman could marry her love interest, and so uh, it was very short lived. I think there might have been five of them with these two creators, J.H. Mm. Williams III and W. Hayden Blackman. Um, but they do magic together. First of all, I love the heavy tones of red. It's just so... 
and the paneling. I love how creative these artists are with the paneling and just how the whole page works together. It's not like box after box. It's like many pages are a cohesive piece of art. Um, and this one's really cool because we even get a team up with Wonder Woman who is also awesome. Hence the title, World's Finest. World's Finest. Here's another example of the paneling just being so fluid and detailed and moves across the page. I love this one. So this one, there is a fight happening in the background and the panels on the bottom are placed inside or on the side of um, buildings in the city that contribute to the larger picture of the page. Oh. Uh, this is another really detailed one with lots of colors. Batwoman is so cool. Yeah, so the story in this one I really enjoyed a lot and the art was absolutely phenomenal. I own the second and the third one, but I would love to own the whole series. Yes, so I would recommend this one if you want to read a really good superhero comic and you love Batwoman or female empowerment. Yes. Uh, next up I got My Friend Dahmer by Durf Backdurf. Beautiful name. <laughs> yes. I got this book signed by Durf, uh, met him at Kent State University during the Kent Comics Arts Festival. It was really cool. It was, uh, he did like a whole talk on the book and I, I just bought it a week before so to ha get it signed and have him talk about it was really cool. Basically he and a group of friends, they grew up with the Jeffrey Dahmer. They knew him in high school. He was this kid that no one really liked. and. To them, he was kind of like a joke, but at the same time, he was part of their group where he would just do a bunch of random things that they would tell him to do. And, you know, he would show up to school drunk at like 7.45 in the morning and just do really crazy things that they told him to do. And it's, it's just a really interesting book, and it just chronicles, you know, what it was like for this guy growing up with Jeffrey Dahmer. And... It stops before Dahmer gets, becomes, you know, who he's destined to become. I think in this page you can see uh, Dahmer just showing up to school drunk. Uh, and it, it, it really... So, did the friends sort of, like, perhaps traumatize him by how they took advantage of him? Yeah, like, he, he kind of talked about it. Um, they, were, they weren't at all good friends. He, he actually talks about how him and Dahmer grew up in very similar situations. Uh, parents divorce like the thing the problems that caused Dahmer to become the person he was like he experienced himself They grew up right down the street mm -hmm. from each other But you know like he said he didn't go and murder anyone or yeah. chop up, you know, it, it's just a really good read <laughs> And I believe it's being made into a movie or television Ooh. television series or something now But yeah, it was just really cool to have mm -hmm. him come to Kent State and I like the art style. give the lecture on the book and yeah, he He's got another co comic uh, he talked about he was working on at the time. <laughs> okay. Last comic book that I have to share today on this video um, is The Sandman by Neil Gaiman dun, 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 dun. and company because various artists contribute to it over the issues or installments. So I don't even have all of them. Um, I'm missing one, three, five and nine, I think, um, but I do have a lot of them. I read this series back in middle school, I believe, so I actually haven't read it for a long time, and I want to read the whole series once I collect all of the volumes of them, but I loved this one because of the art. The pictures! The pictures, yeah. <laughs> but also the story. It's about, like, various entities, um, characterized, so Pretty much one of the main protagonists you follow is um, Dream, and Dream is personified Dream. There's other characters like Delirium who are depicted, and Death. Abstract um, concepts personified. Yeah, and they sort of exist throughout time, so it's really cool. Like, in one of them, there is like a meetup with William Shakespeare. Really enjoyed the um, drawings in this one, as well as the story. Neil Gaiman is an incredible writer, super just like intelligent. Um, this is a picture of death um, over here. 
Death is a really cool character. Delirium was my favorite character because she had this cool rainbow hair and all her speech bubbles were like rainbow colored. Similarly, like Dream's speech bubbles were all like dark. Lucifer ends up spent, spinning off into its own series and mm -hmm. off of this oh, show. Oh yeah. This is the page where they meet up with like William Shakespeare. Will Shaxford. <sighs> Brian just told me this morning that they produced an audio performance of The Sandman, which is releasing July 15th, so on very Audible. soon on Audible. And it's got Neil Gaiman narrating and like a great cast of people who are performing the voices of All each the character. All different characters she just mentioned. I think we were pretty interested in that. Um, it'll be weird to hear it and then not see the pictures with it. We because could read it, along. Yeah, I guess you could read along. This series also has um, one called Overtures, and that has um, the previously mentioned illustrator for Batwoman working on that one. So I definitely want a copy of that one. I believe it's like sort of like a companion piece like to the series, so you can tell from the cover that it's the same illustrator. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Next up for me is Ultimate Comic Spider-Man. The introduction of Miles Morales. Um, I love this comic. Uh, it's very comic booky. Not a lot of people like the Ultimate Universe because of you know the stories they tell. Um, I believe this is written by Brian Michael Bendis. A lot of people don't like Brian Michael Bendis, but uh, I think he's really great, especially with all the Spider-Man, Peter Parker, or Miles Morales. Uh, but this is really great because it just it was the the original origin story from Miles. It you know we saw spoiler alert the death of Peter Parker previous to this in the uh, volume before this, and then it started all, Ultimate Comics Spider Man Volume One again with Miles Morales. But the Ultimate Comics Spider Man with Peter Parker it was really great. It's it's a good telling of Peter Parker, although he dies young. You know, I'm spoiling it, but like <laughs> to get here, like you have to know that. Um, like it'll help you understand the story better. Yeah, it, okay. it, it helps be, because Miles has to pick up that mantle of becoming Spider-Man and it's in a world in which Peter had been Spider-Man for a while but he was still young. He was still really young. Not like, you know, into the Spider-Verse where... He's like 30. Yeah. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, he's been Spider-Man for like 10 years in that universe. Yeah. But yeah, I just really love the artwork in this and then... Just Miles going on his journey of becoming Peter Parker, seeing an African-American Spider-Man was just iconic. Mm -hmm. Iconic. Iconic. Next up, oh, I don't know which one I should do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do Final Crisis. It's written by Grant Morrison. is an insane DC comic story that um, encompasses, like all the crisis story, it encompasses the entire universe uh, from Superman to... The Green Lanterns to Batman to Frankenstein to the Justice Society to Shazam, uh, Wonder Woman, everybody like everybody's involved, everyone's infected, and this comic is really great because uh, Grant Morrison he's just very smart. His writing is very intelligent. Um, he's one of those writers that can do very existential stories that touch on you know religious, technological. Topics that not even classical writers can convey well, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's a cool page. It's a really cool page, yeah. Um, but essentially, it's the story of good versus evil and an existential narrative that Superman kind of takes part in, and uh, it's just so good. I can't, I can't talk a lot about it without giving away the story. But yeah, Final Crisis, Grant Morrison, all the uh, Christ, DC Crisis big, books are really good. Big team up. Um, great team up but one of the first comics that I read and I was like wow superhero comics are way smarter than people give them credit for and finally Secret World by Jonathan Hickman I know that the cover doesn't look that great yeah <laughs> another For, dust jacket Secret list War. one Secret Wars by Jonathan Hickman sorry this is Jonathan Hickman's Se Secret Wars I literally could have picked anything by Jonathan Hickman I almost picked Avengers Time Runs Out uh, his Fantastic Four is really good. His current X-Men series is amazing. X House of X, 
Secret Wars is really good. Uh, it's kind of a retelling of a story that's already happened because Secret Wars happened back in the 90s, but this is a way different version and it brings back a lot of Hickman's stories from his Fantastic Four run, his uh, Avengers run, his Thor run, etc. And so Avengers time runs out, ends with the Marvel Universe ending and Doctor Doom comes together and brings it all together for Battle World and that's how this begins with God Doom and the story that happens is just it's so good. I, I love it. I love stories that like Final Crisis that incorporate all of the characters from the universe and stories like this that see them in a whole nother alternate universe. So these are just some of our favorite comic books that we own. Um, not all of them, but uh, these are the favorites from our shelves and I hope you enjoyed watching us talk about comic books. So if you are interested in getting into more comic books, then you have a ton of recommendations now. Make sure to follow Slanted Spines on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and friend me on Goodreads. And check out my website at slantedspines.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.